Hello there, everyone. This is uh, Peter of England here, bringing you a, probably for many uh, people who've already subscribed to the channel, uh, a much-awaited update uh, as to what's been happening. Um, after the court trial, as some of you might know, on the uh, 10th of October 2012, um, the verdict went against us in the court. Uh, but we did manage to get my home back and the case has been on appeal and now we are uh, two days away from that appeal. This is the 6th of uh, February 2013 and this Friday at 10 o'clock in uh, Chelmsford Crown Court will be the appeal. Now, for many of you who've come to this channel uh, for the first time, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what's it all about? There's uh, quite a few videos that we've loaded up there now. I uh, can't remember how many, but um, there, are, there are various various stories of the origination of the idea of Peter of England. So probably the first thing we should address for you now is, what is this Peter of England thing about? Principally, it's about an idea. It's an idea that things can be different in this uh, political world that is being drawn ever, um, shall we say, closer to you and like a, a weave or a bag being placed over your head is restricting the vision and the possibilities and the freedoms that people should by, by natural law or common law enjoy. The people that are doing it are the politicians. These are the people that you have so-called democratically elected, but in turn, once you elect them, they turn the democracy or the illusion of democracy into nothing more than what's called an elective dictatorship. Once they're empowered for their five-year period, they do whatever they want. Barack Obama may say, we will never take your guns, but a while after, they arrange an agenda whereby, under a false flag premise, there is a major drive to take your guns. The same has happened in the United Kingdom for various reasons over much of the time. And so we have people like David Cameron in England, Tony Blair before him, John Major before him. And if we basically look back, let's say in the United Kingdom, the last six uh, prime ministers of the country, and we look at what the wake or what the residue that they left behind was, or is, it's been the same policy. It's like a snake, or the head of a snake, coming towards you. The head continues in a straight line, but the curls of the snake move left and right for, um, for one party and moving to the other. So those are called oppo-sames. They pretend to be opposite, but in fact they're the same. And so what we have is higher taxation, less medical care, less um, aid and care for the elderly, uh, more help and bailouts for the bankers. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Under the old edict or tenet of how we should live, um, capitalism works. But as we can see, capitalism only works for the capitalist. And if we look around the world and see all these capitalist models that are completely bankrupt, capitalist Indonesia, Capitalist India, Capitalist South America, Capitalist China, Capitalist Russia, Capitalist Europe. What you find at the end of the month is the people, you and your parents, or your parents' parents, and you in the future, you are the ones that produce the goods and the services. And you are the ones that are always broke at the end of the month. Now why is this? Why is it that the people who handle the the goods and services, or should we say, the, the money for the production of the goods and services, how do they always end up wealthy and you end up poor? There must be something wrong with the model. So, what Peter of England is looking to do is to help you identify within this so-called role of government where the, where the problems lie. Well, one of the main problems that we're looking to attack the the establishment or the status quo is through through the courts and to do this lawfully and to show people that a lot of the mechanisms that have been put onto you are not lawful 
though they may appear legal, they've all been passed through what's called elected dictatorships, and more so now in the United States with Barack Obama's executive orders, which don't have to go through Congress, ever, ever more we are finding a tyrannical, dictatorial um, uh, regime that's, that's taking on no, no different a, a, a view than, than was, was communist Russia under Stalin or, or, or fascism under Hitler. The end results are the same. A dictatorial police state with high surveillance and dissidents get disappeared. This seems to be where the future is going and we see only a few days ago that the Attorney General plus Barack Obama have decided between them, Obama and his handlers of course, that now uh, drone strikes upon United States citizens are quite lawful. Now they might be legal but it's not what I would be uh, wishing on any, any people that I would supposedly be looking at. So what we're looking to do here is to show there are two tracks of law uh, and Freeman Legal Services, which has been set up to help you, is there to show you how to battle your, your point of view or your alternative approach in a court of law. There are two main areas of law that you should look at. One is common or natural law of man, which is almost self-evident, and the other is statute law. Statute law is the law that is imposed by parliamentarians or congressional executives through a government process and then imposed upon you without you being uh, asked, in fact, or even not being given uh, the opportunity to have what's con something called informed consent. If you're fully informed as to what they want to have done to you and you agree, then fine, but not if it's done by deceit, treachery and subterfuge as is the case in modern Western governments and other uh, governments of the world are all dancing along under the same New World Order agenda. So that's really what we're looking to, to highlight. If we could start fighting it in a courtroom, it's the only place where they will listen. You can demonstrate on the street, as I said before. You can march, you can write to your MP. It won't change anything. If you demonstrate, all they'll do, like with Occupy movement and um, the Arab Spring movement um, and other demonstrations, they'll just bring troops onto the street in full battle dress to combat you. And they treat you as an enemy combatant because the big secret is you're owned you're owned as a slave, and they have a piece of paper, your birth certificate, followed by your national insurance number or social security number, which, under what's called an antecedent implied contract, ties you to the debt burden of the United States and the United Kingdom through what's called the Bretton Woods Financial Agreement in 1945. Uh, 1944, sorry. So, what we're looking to do is to help you with any problem you have as far as debt, litigation, and other uh, areas of um, civil law. Uh, we can't help you too much if you've uh, got into a fight or breach what's called um, common law, um, personal, um, personal uh, you've attacked somebody or you've caused damage to property. But if it's something that you're fighting the government over or an agency that's looking to, to fine you, to withdraw a right, withdraw a privilege, to impose something upon you, then this we can help you with. And so you should get in touch with us and we'll show you how to, how to do this. There is an old saying by the Knights Templar from the 12th century. And what these Knights Templar used to say that they would like to do or should do with their enemies is do one of three things. And that was to wrap their enemies either in debt, in litigation, or in a shroud. And this is basically what they do with dissenters today. One, they've got you in debt, then they'll bury you in litigation. And if they don't do that, like Colonel Gaddafi or um, the Syrian regime now, or any dissenters with people like um, Saddam Hussein in Iraq, they will wrap them in a shroud. So this is what we're looking to achieve. This is what we're looking to do. Uh, we're in court on 
uh, on Friday, this Friday, so an update will be coming. And so what I am looking to achieve here is to prove in the court that Peter of England can represent himself in a court of law and at the moment the Crown are still maintaining that I have no right to stand in this court of law representing my, myself under my, my uh, given uh, or assumed uh, title under common law that I must tread into their court under the straw man fictional identity that was given to me by my parents uh, at birth and then reinforced at the age of 16 by the application by myself for a national insurance number. So, if you're looking at the channel for the first time, thank you for listening, thank you for watching. The bottom line which we will deliver to you is a, a sovereign identity. This is not to be confused with trying to cheat the system or being some crazy, flaky, phony, um, nonsensical individual that's barking up a, up a tree um, that's going to produce no results. The, the law is factual, the common law and your natural rights have been buried and all we've done is dug down, dug up the pay dirt and hopefully we'll then be able to deliver this to you. So thank you for watching and we'll update you again with another video very soon. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and then we'll keep you uh, automatically updated. Thank you.